31 years ago, Reverend Edward R. King began praying with a group of godly people who longed to see God meet the needs of others. Together, they searched the Word of God for answers to help believers pray God's will into the earth for all nations. Thus begins our history. On April 12, 1968, we were officially registered as the First Baptist Church. The founders were Reverend Edward R. King and members of the community. Services were held at Barber Street School, Fred D. Wish School, and later at the Jonathan Temple. In 1969, one year later, membership more than doubled. Pastor King resigned in 1970 and Reverend Thomas Tate became the interim leader. Dr. Leroy Bailey Jr. was called to pastor in 1971, at which time the membership continued to grow. Church auxiliaries numbered more than 15 and our broadcast ministry began. The Lord did great things for us in 1972. We purchased Jonathan Temple joined both the National Baptist Convention and the American Baptist Convention, funded missions through other organizations and purchased our first church van. Sunday school grew and church attendance was so great that there was sitting room only. Our name was then changed to the First Baptist Church of Hartford. In 1977, we purchased, renovated, and moved into our facility at 221-225 Greenfield Street. During that same year, First Baptist provided housing for the Albany Avenue Senior Center. The city daycare continued to operate from our educational building. Brownies and Girl Scouts began meeting at our church and a walk-a-thon was organized to raise funds for further renovations. Through the strong leadership of Pastor Bailey, God raised up an army of praying saints who stood in the gap as our church experienced spiritual and physical growth. If you will commit your ways, if you will commit your ways and your resources, I said your ways and your resources, I'm talking about your time, your talent. I'm trying to tell you, if you commit your ways to the Lord and your resources, He will provide for all of your necessities from 1978 to 1981, a tutorial program, self-defense school, and community groups began using our facilities. We acquired the property at 207 Greenfield Street, gave Christmas gifts to Children's Village, supported the United Negro College Fund and Morehouse School of Religion. In addition, we purchased hymnals for inmates at the Hartford Correctional Center and supported Operation Push. The First Baptist School of Evangelism started in 1982, at which time we also began to accommodate the CRT Head Start program in our educational facility. The telephone company agreed to give us land for senior housing in 1983, and HUD approved a 40-unit flex. Exceptional strides were made in 1987. Under the leadership of our beloved pastor, we liquidated the mortgage at 221-225 Greenfield Street, broke ground for the elderly housing, and Give Us This Mountain Stewardship Campaign was initiated that same year, along with the plans for the new First Baptist Church complex. First Church opened its bookstore in 1989, 
initiated the Eagle Substance Abuse Ministry and began building 40 additional units for a second seniors housing village. We then purchased 40 acres of land in Bloomfield, Connecticut to build our new church complex, the first cathedral. During this time, we also continued to grow spiritually. In order to effectively communicate the gospel message, change lives, and win souls to Jesus Christ, an exceptional structure of ongoing ministries was instituted. Youth church, praise dancers, senior missionaries, and First Academy are but a few of the dynamic ministries at First Baptist Church. We are a church led by the Spirit of God. He has blessed us spiritually and financially and our membership continues to increase. Since our humble beginning, over 6,000 people have united with this ministry while changing the lives of countless others. This land that you stand on, this building that you're going to enter in terms of the shell now, but the facility that will be completed is a faith effort. Yes. 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 Many years ago, when I was given this in a dream vision, the Lord took me, as it were, to Billy. Billy Powell was in this dream with me. We were riding in a car. And there was this great tent, great tent, just like this, in this circular kind of fashion. And I saw, and I, I'm just being, and not that uh, I'm a, I am a proponent of his, but not a proponent in the sense of having him as an icon, but thank God, he uses who he will. But I Amen. saw great Christ in this And there were thousands of people. Amen. And the Lord spoke to my spirit. He said, you can do this. Then there were some other moments, uh, let me say days later, months later, he showed me also this building. And he showed me the arches on the building. He said, those arches are built that way. This is amazing. Even before the architect had it, as symbols of our hands lifted up in praise yeah. and adoration to God. Mm. And then he showed me in the parlor, in the corridor room, in what we would call the Grand Lobby, or the Novex of the building, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming at a time. Amen. Mm -hmm. This building, those of you who know more about the history of this building in terms of the land that we have now, you will understand that everything that we have acquired has been a result of a miracle. Amen. Miracle after miracle. I'm going to say it again. Miracle after miracle. After miracle. And God did it. 
when we went to Memphis several years ago and we visited the Central Church, and after the young people had come from the uh, family center and to the sanctuary, there was a kid, and I won't call that child's name, but I want to make sure that when we walk in the door to this church, that child, who happens to be an adult now, will be one of the people who cut the ribbon. And she said, we'll never have this. We'll never have anything like that. And that's why it has to be done. Not for us alone, but for those who have no faith. We're not building this building for us alone. Please understand that. It is not for us alone. You don't have to have a building to believe in God, but some people have to have a building to come to faith in God. What is your feelings about this building? It's marvelous, and it's America, and it's the work of the Lord, and it's His handiwork. We have a great leader, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Awesome. Awesome. This is definitely uh, the handiwork of God. This could not be without His presence, His ability, His provision. Mm. It's a place where people are going to come and be saved. It's a place where people are going to be healed. It's a place where God's kingdom is going to be established. It's a light unto the world. My family has been blessed, yes. and this is just the beginning. Yes. God is good, He's wonderful. Yes. He is even yes. developing in your yes. faithful yes. members yes. their own, yes. their own uh, blessing, yes. their own yes. even yes. vision. It all represents oh, give me some nap, the fact that we are coming to a new age and that we are growing in Christ and that this is going to be a new decade. We thank God for the challenging times and how He has lifted us out of every situation. We praise Him for our beloved Pastor Bailey, who has allowed God to use him in leading us to higher heights through His prayers and vision for our church family and the nation.